I've been in my new supervillain layer for almost four months and it's coming along nicely. I've got lasers, robots, augmented humans. That's me, of course. But you know what I don't have? An autonomous drone swarm. That's right, for all my fancy toys. When I want to launch a drone, I have to carry it outside, put a flash battery in, then when it lands, plug it in again to recharge. Handling my own drones with my own hands like a peasant. This is obviously completely unacceptable. I mean, really, who can live like that? So I'm going to set up my DJI Spark so I can take off, land, and take off again as many times as I want without human intervention. The DJI Spark is perfect for this application because it's the only drone I have Okay, well, it's the only drone I have and it's perfect for other reasons. It has an onboard USB charging port I can use. There are other self-charging solutions for drones, but they're all really expensive. I want to make mine as cheaply as possible by only using PCBs and that was my sponsor, JLC PCB can do all the manufacturing without me needing to get custom tooling or anything like that because it's made entirely out of PCBs. There's not going to be very much fabrication for me to do, which is the point. In a potential commercial product, you don't want a lot of extra labor. In most of my upcoming videos where I work with JLC PCB, I'm not really trying to show off my DIY skills. I'm trying to show just how easy it is to get started in hardware manufacturing if you focus on simple but practical solutions that you can make with just small runs of PCBs. For this, I come up with a product idea, figure out how I want to do it, hand those specifications off, and then test the final result. It's a pretty cool process, and I hope it inspires some of you to try your hand at real, practical, small-scale manufacturing, and not just DIY. But don't worry, I'll still show lots of DIY here also. So what I've have made is a grip of metal squares and two spring-loaded contacts that connect to a small PCB held in the back of the drone by its micro-USB port. Those landing squares alternate in polarity, plus and minus. Provided I land the drone within 30 degrees of straightforward, the two contacts should land on charging squares about 95% of the time. If they miss, I'll just tap the throttle for a second and shift the drone a tiny bit. The circuit on the back of the drone will switch the plus and minus polarity depending on how the drone lands. 5V will then charge the drone. A little while later, ready to fly again without me touching it or even having to be in the same place. Technically, I could be anywhere in the world there is an internet connection. Okay, right now, I just have to solder the controller board and the charging pad together, mount it on something, and then we can try it out. Okay, I'm losing daylight, so I'm just going to put the PCBs on old plywood and that's it, test it with my old phones. Voila, it worked, so now let's test it with the drone.
you can see the green light is blinking. It means when the pole pin touch the charging pad, it's working. So it's being charged right now. And on the other side, you can take a closer look. That work really well for a proof of concept. Of course, for long-term use, I will need to make some kind of retractable hanger to protect it from the weather. But other than that, I think we have a winner. A bunch of these could be set up in a line two kilometers apart and a drone controlled over the internet or programmed with waypoints so it could just hop from charging pad to charging pad. Or with a retractable hanger, this could be kept on top of a van or RV for local reconnaissance. The possibilities are endless. Next time, what would you like to see me use it for? What changes would you like to see made? Let me know in the comment section. That's it for today. Please remember to check if YouTube has unsubscribed and notify you. If you can post links to this video, it's a huge, huge help. Then thank you all for watching and I'll see you next time.